Hello, my name is Faisal Khan. Welcome to another video of question and answer series. And today we are going to be talking what is a crypto mixer and why is it important in the world of money transfers and so forth. But first, you know, this is a very maybe an easy non-technical description of what a crypto mixer is. And let's start with that. You know, the basic definition is a crypto mixer also known as a crypto tumbler or mixer, is a tool. It's basically an app that helps to enhance the privacy and anonymity of cryptocurrency transactions. It does this by mixing or pooling different transactions together, thus making it difficult for anyone to trace the original source or destination of the funds. Um, in a Typical cryptocurrency transaction, as you know, there is the sender's address, there is the receiver's address, there is the amount being traded on that blockchain, whatever the value is, and there is a timestamp. That is what a public ledger looks like. So you'll be able to see it. And if this person sends it to four other people, all that information is recorded the same way. And if this person receives it from three people and then sells you know, sends uh, information or value by breaking it up to 22 other people, all that information is recorded. So at some point in time, if you have the right tools, you're very easily able to reconstruct a whole correlated picture. Needless to say, it takes computing power, it takes uh, some sophisticated software, etc. But this is the kind of tools that, you know, law enforcement agencies, intelligence agencies, anti-money laundering specialists and anti-money laundering speciali uh, specialist monitoring companies have access to. So the process involves sending cryptocurrency in, in a crypto mixer. So, you know, over here, everything can be found. I just want to make sure that you understand this, that if I send money from here to here, I know who sent me the money because the trail is all public. Everything is 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 uh, public. It's on the public ledger. I can look at it. And if I know that this particular address belongs to sender and this particular address belongs to the receiver, then I can obviously look at everything or and go back and, and go up and down the tree of their transaction and figure things out. But a crypto mixer is something very unique. So what it does is the process involves sending cryptocurrency to a mixer's address. This is this is very important. It sends cryptocurrency to a mixer's address. The mixer then sends the same amount of cryptocurrency minus a fee to different addresses or address, right? Often in smaller denominations, breaking the link between the original sender and the receiver. So let's say you have a swimming pool and you know, that swimming pool represents the mixer. Uh, or you have an actual cement truck, right? And it, it's constantly mixing. And if I, if Alice decides to throw a red ball inside, and the ball being uh, the red ball being one BTC equivalent, everyone can see her throwing the red ball. But if she has another person come in uh, under a disguise and take two smaller balls that equal to the volume of the red ball. No one would know that it's Alice's thing. Now, this may seem very, mm, what are you talking about? But let's look at it in simplicity. So you have Alice. She sends, uh, you know, bitcoins to the crypto mixer. Some other user also sends it. Some other user also sends it. Now it's mixing it. How do you know which one belongs to Alice? How do you know which one belongs to this person? How do you know which one belongs to that person? And she can pay Bob without revealing her identity by just telling the mixer, hey, listen, this is my Bitcoin, mix it, minus the fee, and send it to this address. So when Bob's address receives the payment, guess what? The tree has so many inputs. Which was the actual person that actually sent it to Bob? Was it the lady in the orange dress and a hairdo? Was it this man in the suit? Or was it Alice? There is no way to tell. And that is what a crypto mixer does. It confuses you, essentially. It, it, it's like, you know, you have a needle, it brings the haystack. That's what it does. So what does a crypto mixer do? It user sends cryptocurrency to the mixer's address. The mixer pools the user's funds together with that of the others. 
The mixer then sends out the same amount of cryptocurrency to different addresses not associated with the original input. The mixer deducts a fee for its services before sending out new outputs. In some cases, the mixer doesn't always send the same amount. It can break the amount. It will total to the same amount, but it can break it up and send it across to the address as well. So that is something, uh, one of the functionalities of the mixer. Um, crypto mixes are commonly used by individuals or organizations that wish to, you know, maintain their privacy, their financial privacy. So imagine you have, you know, I don't know, let's say 600 bitcoins. You were one of the earlier pioneers who got 600 bitcoins at $20,000, whatever it is uh, for a price of Bitcoin, you have a lot of money. And if people know you, and if you're from a third world country or even for a first world country, a developed country, they will hound you. There may be, uh, you know, concerns of being kidnapped. There may be extortion. There must be racketeer. There can be so many issues why you don't want to let other people know how much money you have. Imagine it's like walking in the street and you have your checkbook and you're saying, hey, guess what? I bank with Bank of America and I have uh, $6.1 million in my bank account. And you walk all along, all day long with your friends, family, office colleagues, gym, etc., and they all know you have $6.1 million. What do you think is going to happen exactly? People are going to want to get some piece of that money. So a lot of people, you know, a lot many people have their privacy concerns when it comes to public blockchains, and thus they want to, they want anonymity. They want to mask it. They want to take that money and put it into something else where no one can trace the uh, transaction back to the original uh, wallet, you know, to, from where the money came from. And that is what crypto mixers do. So, you know, Alice can send a Bitcoin, uh, for example, to the a seller and she reveals her identity or she can say one Bitcoin, I'll send it to a mixer and she sends it back over here. The seller receives it. She can give the transaction hash of this transaction and say, hey, you received it. Because of the multiple people involved in the mixing part, that is what makes a mixer very successful. Now, imagine if there was only one person or two people or three people. It would be pretty easy to, uh, don't you think, if these four people were the only four people in this mixer, I think it would be pretty easy to find out who's sending money to whom, right? And uh, at some point in time, you know, you'd be able to sort of deduct okay, Alice is the only person really receiving it. Everyone else is the one, only one sending it and everyone else is receiving it. So she is the one, okay, these all basically are maybe wallets associated to Alice, etc. And you can do many sorts of deductioning and reasoning. When I mentioned that, you know, uh, law enforcement has really, really good access to this thing. So they know the sender's address, right? They may, may know the receiver's address. Then they look for transactions, okay. This sender at you know 10:51 and 34 seconds sent to BTC, and at 10:52 or 10:53 this person received 1.9 BTC. So if you look at the deduction of 0.1 BTC, chances are because at that point in time there were no other two BTC transactions, chances are that sender one is basically the recipient of this transaction. That's is, i.e. the recipient is actually sender one because you don't know this could be the end wallet, this could be whatever it is, right? And law enforcement have these tools that can actually reconstruct the transaction trees for not just for days or weeks, for months and years back. And they can find out which are the nefarious wallets, which are the sanctioned wallets, which are the wallets under observation, which are addresses that I have known to be associated with financial crime, etc. And they can figure everything out eventually. If you have thousands and millions of users participating, and if you are breaking this 2 BTC down to 0.1367839 BTC, and then after two days you're sending 1.0863849 BTC and so forth and so forth and so forth, then it becomes very difficult to find out. Because the path exists, because the path exists, from a probability point of view, the solution also exists. But it becomes very improbable to find a solution. So under suspicion addresses can be looked at. You can look at it. You can see, okay, you know, this is one point. 
uh, nine BTC, someone else is getting something else, someone else is saying. So the more, like I said, the more participants you have, then it becomes a little bit crazy. Okay, who was sending money to whom? This person is receiving, you know, 1.9 BTC. Uh, okay, this person also received 1.9 BTC. Who sent it? Was it sender number four or sender number one? Both were sending two BTCs. The fees was deducted, 1.9. So now I'm confused. I don't know if this Mr. Orange got uh, 1.9 BTC from sender one or from sender four. And that is, you know, uh, very difficult. So cannot reconnect the money due to the high volume of users. And that is really the fundamental thing what a mixer, crypto mixer does. So one such use of crypto mixers is that, you know, they can obviously be used for illicit purposes such as money laundering, funding of terrorism, or funding other illegal activities. Uh, just like anything else, you know, there are nefarious uses and purposes and, 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 and efforts uh, that are that can be very difficult to mitigate. Some notable mixers, and I, again, I'm not advocating anything. I'm just giving you some names. Sinba, this one. Unijoin is the other one. Tornado Cash, which has been sanctioned by the U.S. government. Uh, Mixer.money, Mixero, Anonymix. And there are a few others that, you know, are coming and going. But these are essentially the mixers. Um, if you must use a mixer, please do not be stupid and do anything illegal. Don't be over smart. Chances are you and I are usually you know, not that smart enough to beat the system. Don't use a mixer that is not well known, else you could lose your coin. So there are plenty of scam mixers that will say, oh, we'll do this and we'll do that. And guess what? You send them the coins and they've got your coins and nothing you can do about it. So please do your own research. Crypto mixers, because, uh, and the reason I'm mentioning this is because there is a hybrid world now for money transfer services where cross-border payments are being done with crypto. And you need to understand crypto mixers because as part and parcel of your compliance package, you will need to understand uh, is the money going to crypto mixer addresses? How do you mitigate that? Is the money originating from crypto mixer addresses? How do you, you know, how does that, how is that taken into account, etc.? So, anyways, uh, I hope you now know what a crypto mixer is. As always, if you enjoy such content, you know, uh, please do consider subscribing, sharing. Thanks for watching. As if you, if you have any uh, question or comment, please put it down below. I'll be happy to answer. Till next time, this is Faisal Khan, signing out.